Welcome to our church. What they say. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. This morning, the reason why I asked you to get that ink pen out and that piece of paper, this is what I want you to write down. I want you to write down on there, even if it's just an initial, a battle that you are going through or a battle you know somebody in your family or close to you is going through. And go ahead and write that down on there right now. Just write it down on that piece of paper. Write that battle down, whether it's your finances, whether it's your spiritual life, maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's somebody else, maybe it's your children, whatever it is. Even if you just put in this, we're not going to collect them. I'm not going to walk around and take them from you and go, oh, that's what's wrong with you. I'm not going to do that. I just want you to put that battle down there. And then before we get in here to worship, I want you to recognize there's a story about Paul and Silas in the middle of their, their battle and their chains. And the worship not only sets them free. Listen to me, this is very important. The worship doesn't only set them free. It sets everybody else that's in prison free. And not only does it set everybody else in, that's in prison free, it sets the enemy free that was there that was trying to harm them. So when we worship this morning, we're going in before the battle happens. And we're going to see some freedom happen today. That's the prayer. Okay? So while we're worshiping, I want you to think about what you wrote down. And I want you to see yourself overcoming because this is... I'm, going, I'm starting to preach already. Let me... I want you to see that you are called for great and mighty things. You are an overcomer. You're more... Listen, you are more than a conqueror. So whatever you just wrote down as your battle, you can win. Let's pray. Here we go. Heavenly Father, God, this morning we just come to you in, in awe of who you are. Thank you for Jesus. Uh, thank you for the picture of being a father and what you did for me on, and have him go to a cross, how you exchanged his life for my life. Lord, I, that, it blows my mind that you love me that much. God, thank you for bringing all the stuff into my life that points me back to you. Thank you for allowing the bad things to point me back to you. Thank you for the blessings of the good things that draw me close to you. Thank you for loving me. Lord, this morning we want to make this a day of worship. But we also want to see a day of freedom. It's not a performance, God. We want to see you come down. We want to see you change lives radically. This is our prayer this morning. You're an awesome God, and we know that you're going to do some awesome things. We praise you and love you and thank you. In your precious name we pray, so be it. Are you ready? Did it work? Good morning! Hey, look, look, I'm fancy like you. I got this doohickey on. I'm going to walk around and preach. It's going to be great. Or I'll just say goofy things and you can preach later. But we'll both have our cool doohickey on our leg. Thanks for coming to What's New Worship, uh, Facebook What's New Worship, Twitter What's New Worship, YouTube What's New Worship, Instagram. Do we put stuff on Instagram? I don't know. I don't have that. But somebody does. And you can check it. You're welcome. Um, so the sermons, we record those. Those will go up later today on YouTube. So if you uh, get on YouTube and subscribe, put your email address in. It'll email when you come up. So you can watch it again because it's that good. I can edit that story out too. So the Cowboys beat the Redskins. Wow. And then on to the next week. Just so you know. Hold on. One clap for your one star. We're proud of you. <laughs> so. I don't, know. I don't even remember the score. Didn't we win? Anyway. Two stars. All right. Anyway, so thank you for coming to us to worship Sunday mornings. We have Sunday school here in, our, in this sanctuary at 9 o'clock. It's called AHA. Very cool. We watched like a video series and Andy talks about it. Definitely awesome. This morning we had a lot of people in here. Because it was a really, really awesome video. Um, you can check it out on Right Now Media, I guess, if you want to watch it. If you missed it. On the YouTube. We're on the YouTube. What? Aha. How you first spell that? Um, so, Sunday morning's 9 o'clock. And then also, a Coach has a discipleship class in the back. And then we have our classes for the uh, kids from kindergarten all the way up, or two or three all the way up, uh, to middle school, high school. So, if you definitely like to come out early, uh, get, get your kids in one of those classes and come check this out. It's a lot of fun. So, tomorrow, Bible studies at your house? No Bible study. Oh, poor Tia. All right, so take a day off. No Bible study tomorrow, but Celebrate Recovery is in here. We partner with Victory Church for them. That is just a Christian-based organization to help people with previous trauma or drug addiction, anything they got going on. So if you know anyone who's struggling with that or if you'd like to come help out, uh, please be praying for that. And that is tomorrow night here at the church at 630. Tuesday night is Women's Fitness here at the church, right? Dancing and such. They wouldn't let me come, so someone else come. 
So for the women, I love what's new. And then on Wednesday, the wild women are crafting. Woo! Man, I can see the excitement. Can't even come to the craft. I thought you had safety scissors. I mean, that's right up my alley. My hair's short, I wouldn't even cut it off. So Wednesday night here at the church. So we got youth group at 6.30, which is in here and in the fellowship hall. The crazy women are going to be crafting on that side in the kids' room. You'll, well, just don't paint on the walls, all right? Relax, no wildness. And then also coaches' uh, family project is going on on Wednesday. So come to the church because we will have something for everybody. So maybe out to Austin, that's just coming Wednesday. Thursday night, we have What's Next Bible Study in Front Royal. Uh, that is at uh, Chris and Emily's house. And then it's on Facebook as What's Next. What's Next Bible Study. So check that out if you like, check the, if you like to go. And then also the Women's Bible Study. Is that starting now? October 6th, uh, Barbara is starting a, our Barbara Cohen is starting a Women's Bible Study here at the church at 6.30. If you'd like to come to that. I'm not invited. What? At her house. There went all the officialness, the announcements. Up until then, it was flawless. So in October, I didn't read the bulletin. and I just wrote things on a piece of paper. I don't know what we're doing here. So that's coming up soon. So 10th Avenue North, North Concert that TJ is helping put on is on October 8th. If you would like to be a roadie and carry heavy things and set stuff up before and after and watch the concert for free, for free please see Dave. And if you'd like to do that or you already talked to Dave about it today after the service, if you can meet him, he'll just be walking around. He just got to get a couple things from you guys, just talk to you for about five minutes. So if you'd like to help out with that, please see Dave and definitely stay out after to help us with that. Uh, we are having, the church is getting rented later today, so if you would like to be strong and muscular and stack chairs after the, the uh, service today, totally allowed. So we're going to stack them over here and then over here and then set up a bouncing. It's going to be awesome. So that's today if you can help us out with that. Um, Scare Mare is on the 15th. We're taking a bus down of all the youth, so middle and high school. Any of your friends, get your five buses back. We're going to bring all the kids back. Um, so that going to Scare Mare is down in Lynchburg, put on by Liberty University. It's a big awesome haunted house, and at the end they preach to you very very cool so if you have any friends or neighbors you'd like to take with you that is on the 15th and there's a sign-up sheet out here or just see Josh let him know and he'll write your name on the sign-up sheet because that sign-up sheet is a, it, totally official just like this announcements you're welcome uh, where is the women's dinner here on the 15th nope it's at your house all right so the wild women are having a dinner on the 15th here at church see Christine if you have any questions for that and then on the 21st of October is our feed the need uh, going to second chance church another chance church uh, we're gonna be making spaghetti if you'd like to help out with that, uh, we'll, have an, we'll have a sign-up sheet over here. You can bring spaghetti stuff. You want to finish? I don't even know if you can read my handwriting. I don't even know what I wrote. Somebody was talking to me and my hands were shaking. So, I don't know. Just part of it. On the 30th of October, we're going to have our trunk or treat here in the parking lot at the, over here at the church. And we're going to have stuff in here for the kids to do. So, if you'd like to decorate your trunk and get all dressed up and give away candy, it's going to be awesome. So, that's on the 30th. Please help us out with that. And then the last thing, uh, if you have a teenager or a youth or anyone like that, the fellowship hall during the sanctuary, during the sermon time here in a minute is for parents with toddlers, nursing moms, stuff like that. So all the teenagers need to be in here. Um, so if you can grab your own kids and drag them in here for us, and then that way the, the fellowship hall can just for, for, for the moms and the parents and stuff that kind of have to be out there. And then obviously the TV's running for them. Uh, so if you can please do that and help us out. If not, I'm going to go get a baseball bat out of my car. Uh, my kids are right here. Hi, Ian and Haley. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, you saw that bat on the way, didn't you? Mako, that thing's bright orange. It'll work. Um, so uh, please grab that if you can do that for us. And then also we have our, our stack of Bibles on the other side of this wall and then the blessings wall. If you need a Bible, please take one with you. And if you have any blessings going on in your life, anything God bless you with, you can just write on a piece of paper and then just hang it on the wall there. What? I don't know what we're talking about. I'm almost done. Oh, for coach? I'll just stand next to him while I pray. It's going to be awesome. Um, so uh, if, you have, just, if you have a blessing, you can write that on the wall. If, you have, if you'd like to distract me at any time, just raise your hand and I'll get to you. I don't know what we're doing. Um, and then also, if you could please just help us grow as a church. We have our thing for tithes on the wall. We don't pass an offering plate here. Uh, if, you just give, uh, if you'd love to give freely, that'd be absolutely awesome. And then we have a pillar out here. Coach, you're coming to pray to bring the enthusiasm of the century. Come this way. It's a little easier. They got fancy pants and doohickeys and such over there. Thanks for coming. When coach is done praying, if you want to walk around, grab a donut, find somebody you don't know. All right, go ahead and pray. No, ain't no way. <laughs> oh, not that uh, if you're a first-time visitor, please fill out the uh, paper on uh, in front of you somewhere. Stick it in the offering. And stick it in the offering, and uh, that way, if you and if you have prayer requests. Please make sure you uh, fill that in. There, I know lots of hurting people, 
Uh, also, I have a we have a, a challenge cancer. Pray on the AIDS at 8 a.m., 8 p.m. We have a council, a prayer team that prays for just cancer patients, so cancer survivors. So, if you uh, like to get on that, that's on. That'll be on Facebook. You can see the prayer requests and get on there and pray and be a part of that prayer team. But if you, it's important that you, obviously we believe prayer is important. So let's pray that uh, that uh, we can help folks that are certainly in need of prayer. So and then October the October the first, we have a single moms thing in here uh, for single moms. If you're a single mom, please, we need your support. We want to help those folks as well. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's a the scripture says not to muzzle the ox that treads out the corn you know what that there's really one uh application but one application to scripture but many many interpretations if you said uh muzzle not the ox that treads out the corn what would that mean to you well that means that you take care of your pastor say amen <laughs> amen there you go it's a it's real important that we that we do that uh, now, and <clears throat> Andy wouldn't want me to say that, but uh, we need to give him more money than he's really making here, so he wouldn't have. He needs a. He doesn't need another full-time job. Uh, this is a big ministry and a lot of things going on. So, your tithes and offerings help him build this church, help you get fed, and so we're really in that part. We need to uh, uh, certainly to certainly help him, but also we want to grow this church and, and get a bigger building. There's a lot of needs. A lot of things that have to happen so if you join me in prayer let's ask the lord to do some great mighty things here in the service today our heavenly father we are so grateful for jesus it's because of him that we exist lord uh, there are many many strongholds that are built in in lives uh, where people have given place to the devil uh, lord uh, we pray against that today is as uh, Andy speaks, may the, these strongholds and false imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against God be destroyed and help them uh, build on the foundation of renewing their mind with the Scripture. Lord, we love you. We thank you for our church. We ask your blessings on that. May the Holy Spirit have its work today. Help each, part, each person be a part in, in, in giving and worshiping. And celebrating your your death, burial, and resurrection. Thank you. We love you now in Christ's name. Amen. Make sure you fill out your prayer request. If you're a visitor, we like to keep track of you. I know Andy keeps track of people on Facebook. Grab a cup of coffee and a donut. We'll see you here in a couple minutes. Um, let's let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm going to be quick, uh, and maybe you guys can come up and do something on the way out too. I don't know. We'll we'll see where we're at. But let's let's pray, and um, let's ask God to do something. I want him to do something in my life that he's never done before. I want him to transform me even more today. I want to renew my mind even more today. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, God, we come to you in your presence. God, thank you for being here. Thank you for, first of all, thank you for never, ever leaving us or never, ever forsaking us. God, thank you for never, ever failing us. Lord, we praise you this morning. Lord, we, we lift up those words to you, God. Your praise will ever be on my lips, Lord. I pray this morning that there was some, some freedom that was brought already, God, in the middle of the worship. I pray some people recognize you. I pray, God, that you were hugging on some people and they felt it in a special way this morning. God, and I pray there were some people that were motivated to go out here and bring their family and friends to you, God, because they need you, God. That's our prayer, God. Use us. Lord, I ask you to speak through me this morning in, in these brief moments, God. I pray that... Uh, You'll, you'll change us. I pray that we would see something different. I pray that we would radically, supernaturally be changed and walk out of here ready to be on fire and reach those around us for your kingdom, God. This is my prayer. We ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I, uh, I, I got this picture up here in... in and uh, there are so many pictures you could go through, and, and a lot of them look really religious when you put uh, a, a, a touch from God or whatever in...
Christian, in the Christian monologue, you hear the words personal Savior often, don't we? We use that term very often. Matter of fact, it's become kind of the, the cliche. It's just in there. We don't even think about it. We just spout it off as Christians, and we don't even know what it really means. We don't ever really think about that word personal. And so when I was looking through the pictures, I was, I was scanning through a whole bunch of different ones, and I came across this one, and I, I said, that's it, man. This isn't like super religious. This is God meeting somebody where they are. Sitting at the same bench wherever you are, wherever your bench is, wherever, wherever you're working, wherever your, 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 your school is, wherever your family life is, wherever your marriage is, whatever you're in the middle of, there is a personal, a personal God that wants to connect and wants to meet up with you. And He really does want to be a personal Savior. I, I, I was at a, a, a wedding yesterday when I was speaking to a man and, and uh, he was telling me about at his church how a divorced family had come to the church and the pastor told them that they weren't allowed. A woman in blue jeans was sent away. That's not Christianity. That's the devil. And I don't... I'm going to call out religion, man. We can't do that nonsense. Satanic. I was warned this week somebody's got some issues at our, our church. I said, man, <laughs> you haven't met our church? They all got issues. <laughs> right? Quit nudging your husband. I, I wasn't talking about him. And I was basically asked to shun somebody that's going through problems. I might cry a lot, but I tell you what, when I hear that stuff, I'm ready to punch people in the face. <laughs> it bothers me. Because it's not Bible. I want you to see who this Jesus is, and we're going to get to this later on, but I want, I want you to see this. Go ahead and go to, if you have your Bible, real quick, just a couple things. I want you to see something here in Matthew chapter 9. I am glad that this is the, I am so glad this is the Jesus that I serve. I want you to see this. Look what it says. It says, as Jesus went on from there, started thinking man if you if you read this it says and, and you guys have heard me say this I think it's this it's a phenomenal thing that tax collectors and sinners aren't even grouped in one category like the tax collectors are on a whole nother level of sinners and it says Jesus is hanging out with him but I, I want you to see this what what happened is Jesus walks up to a man that is hated, that is in the middle of his sin, is in his worst possible situation. And what would make someone in that position willing to drop everything, quit their job, drop it right there, and follow him? There was something supernatural about the touch, the communication that went on between Jesus and this man when he said, follow me. Something beyond religion, something beyond what our expectations are of the religion, beyond any of that, there's a personal God, a personal Jesus that looked at a man and said, follow me. And, and so I, I highlighted the words got up because I think sometimes that we just don't do it. You've heard him say, follow me. Some of you are right now, you've heard him. You've heard him over and over and over again. And you know it's the voice of the Lord saying, follow me. And you just sit there. This morning, I want you to meet this, this personal, radically bold, transforming God that would cause you, listen to me, that would cause you to get up and follow Him. 
That's the voice I want you to hear this morning. That's the God that wants to speak to you this morning. Then it says, while Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house. You can't get any more personal than that, right? Matthew, follow me, but I'm going to head to my, I'm going to take you to your house. Follow me to your house, because what I want you to do, Matthew, is I don't want you to just follow me and drop all your, 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 your guilt and your shame and sin on me. I, I don't want you to do that and just kind of have a bailout with Jesus Christ. I don't want you to do that. What I want you to do is I want you to go back home. I'm going to go with you, and I want you to, I want you to live out this new commitment in front of the many, look, it says many tax collectors and sinners that came and ate with the disciples. And then go on to verses 11 through 13. I want, I want you to see this. And this is just the preface to, of my sermon. And it says, when the Pharisees saw this, they asked the So you've got to understand the context here. They're outside of the house murmuring and mumbling and complaining. They're not in there. They, they wouldn't be caught dead with the sinners and the tax collectors. They're not in there. So that makes this verse even more interesting because look what it says. When, when the Pharisees saw this, they asked... Say, I don't want to break God's rules, and that's not what we're supposed to do. Is I don't want to break God's heart. It's a whole different analogy there. If we're doing the rules, then we're just trying to get our checkpoints, and, and somehow there's a God up there keeping stats on us, and, well, he did his prayers today, and he, he, he gave a little bit of money today and all that, and that's not, that's not the picture at all. I'm not trying to do for God. I, I, I love him. And that's where we're going to get to here today. And it says, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. And my agenda here for the next couple weeks, we're going to be speaking about this whole personal upfront and personal. God, my, my agenda here is, is pretty simple. This is what I would like to do. I, I, would, like, um, uh, um, I would like for non-believers to become believers for sure. But I, I wanted to go further than that because of what I would like is I would like believers to become Christians. Now there's a whole big story different in that. And, and I don't mean you're, when, when I say Christian, I don't mean that you were born in a Christian country. And I don't mean that you grew up in church. I, I don't mean any of that. What I, what I mean is what I would like is that term Christian to become what it really should be, a disciple. I think a lot of us have showed up at churches for years, kind of playing the I believe in God game. And we don't really advance because there's too many big questions to be answered. There's too many big obstacles and and uh, what I mean when I say Christian, this is what I, what I mean. Go ahead and pull up the next one. This is what I mean. When I mean Christian... The way that I work... I mean, we could go on and on and on where our life is totally 100% surrendered to Jesus Christ. You've heard me say this, and it's, I guess God has been weighing this because this is what came out in my studies. I am sick of believing in God and not believing God. 
I, I speak to a lot of people all the time on their hurt and what they're going through. That's part of a pastor's job. And what I hear is, I, I believe God, I believe God, but I don't believe when he says you are called to do great and mighty things. I, 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 I don't really believe when he says that I am more than a conqueror. I don't really believe when he says that if he is for me, then what can stand against me? And so there's all this confusion going on with a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ where everything, listen to me, every single aspect of my life somehow realigns and is set up a whole different way. The sin that I'm involved in starts to disappear because I'm growing closer to it. But I get it. I, I understand. I, I get it 100%. I would be a naive person to think that you don't have legitimate concerns. That some of us, even that are here today, even some of us that have been in church for years, that you, you don't have legitimate concerns about what's going on uh, and why you haven't fully, why you haven't completely surrendered. I get it. For some people, it might be uh, suffering. How could God allow I've heard this. If you get around and you start sharing your faith and you start asking people, they'll say, suffering, I don't understand how a loving God, and this is a big obstacle for people, I don't understand how there's people in other countries that don't have food and water, and I don't understand how a loving God can allow that, and that's a big, big obstacle. And so some of you just play the believer's game. I'll just come to church and maybe I'll get my checkpoints off and when I stand before a man, maybe I'll have enough checks to get in and I'll never really surrender because I've got some big questions that aren't answered. Some of you, it's just logic. Logic's your obstacle. I, I don't get how uh, all of the animals fit on the ark and what happened to the dinosaurs. And you have issues with that. These are big questions. I don't understand miracles. I don't know how somebody could spit in the, how could a God spit in a man's eyes and then he's able to see. All this logic starts playing it. I don't understand how a man can live in the belly of a fish for three days. I don't understand all that. I don't understand how five pieces of, of, of bread and two fish have fed everyone. I don't, I don't get all that. And so these are legitimate. Listen, I understand. I'm not, I, I get it. These are, these are tough. I don't understand how a virgin gave birth. I don't understand how someone lived a perfect life. I don't understand how he got up out of the grave himself. There's just not logic to it. So I get it. It's an obstacle. It's a big obstacle for a lot of us. And some of us haven't given ourselves completely over to Jesus. We play the believe in Jesus thing, but not really the believe Jesus thing. Some of your obstacles might be, I've, I know other Christians. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? That's legitimate, isn't it? I mean, even from the story I just shared with you about the man I was talking to yesterday, that's legitimate, man. I don't want to be that person. I'm, I'm a pastor, and I don't want to be a Christian like that. If that's what Christianity is, I'm out. Right? And so that's a legitimate obstacle. Some of the obstacle might be that you don't believe that He is the one and only way. That, that seems a very selfish. That's, a, that's an obstacle some people can't get over. I, I've got good friends that are Buddhist or, or Muslim or, or whatever, and they seem to have good lives. So they're Hindu or whatever, and they've got good lives. And, and, and so it becomes a, 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 a challenge inside of our minds that we say, this Christianity thing is very selfish. But as was mentioned here in the song, there was only one that got up out of a grave for you. But I get it. It's an obstacle. Challenge. Maybe it's uh, relatives. Maybe your mom or dad didn't grow up in Christianity and maybe grew up in a whole other faith and, and somehow there's a morality inside of you that says, you know what, if I, if I believe this whole Christianity thing, man, I'm going to disrespect my, my grandparents or my mom or dad. They must be wrong. And, and so we won't disrespect our... And so that becomes a, an obstacle. Some of us just don't care. It's the, what we were watching this morning on the AHA uh, uh, video that we were watching where we hear the alarms, we see the reality of God, but I, I, I don't want to change. I don't want, I like the way that I'm living right now. It would be foolish for me to try to answer all those questions and, 
And uh, I, I want to say this, and I want you to hear this. Most people don't become Christians because someone has given them... Listen, this is important. Most people that become Christians don't become Christians because someone has given them all of the correct information. I want you to hear why most Christians, why most adults become Christians. Most adults become Christians because something happens that seems to shrink all of those other obstacles. Something personal. I wrote down the word tragedy, and I was sharing even with the band, and a couple years ago we were talking, we did a message called Why All the Doo-Doo, and I, I asked people in, in our congregation, I said, what was the point when you came to the Lord? What was the point where you recognized the Lord? And, and the things that I heard were things like, hey, my mom died of cancer, or I was in a car accident, or I got shot, or you know, there's all these different things, and I started thinking, man, tragedy somehow allows this personal God to come in, doesn't it? Sometimes it's the goodness of God. Sometimes it's that moment when you don't have anything and you're, you're not, you don't know who God, where God is and you've been calling out to Him and apparently He doesn't care about me. He doesn't, he's not worried about me at all. And, and you go to the mailbox and there's a, there's a check there that was an accident. Somebody had overcharged you and it's back there in your pocket and then you get that goodness of God and you go, man, there's this, there's a personal touch, right? I, I don't, I could stand up here and tell you what I went through on my uh, ordination a, a few years back and, and uh, there's these terms and, and wouldn't it be crazy if you had to, somebody had on the Bible, on, on their Facebook and I, I confronted them a little bit and just trying to explain to them a little bit, but they said there's, you have to believe the whole Bible if you're going to go to heaven and that's not true, listen, that's not true, that's, that's not true. I think once you believe in the Jesus of the Bible, you will start to believe the whole Bible. But the only thing that you need to get down is that Jesus loves you and that He died for you and that He rose again. He paid for your sin. That's all you need to do to get to heaven. That's it. I could stand up here and, and, and try to answer all of your questions. I, I could stand up here and, and talk to you about theology proper and de demonology and anthropology and the bibliology and the Christology and the ecclesiology and the eschatology. And, and I'm looking at your faces right now and like, what? <laughs> and, but there's some big questions to be answered. There's no doubt. Some of you have these gigantic questions and I, it would be foolish. I think some of those are very valid reasons very valid reasons not to uh, to believe who God is and, th and then I know what you're thinking pastor you're not just going to be able to slip by on that one that Jesus died on the cross it's not that easy I'm not I'm not just falling for that like you're not going to make me I spent all of my life trying to put together all of these things I got all of these walls up I know all these ops you're not going to it's not going to fall apart that easy. I know what you're thinking, and, and just to kind of set the stage, I, I want to show you, you've already kind of done it in, in certain ways, and, and I'm going to speak to the men here just for a few minutes, but uh, just think about the first time that you started dating or, or someone started talking about marriage. I want you to bring up these obstacles. These are some obstacles that, that men have. The first one there is... Area and it's not, you know, it's a big issue. It's this obstacle that we see as men. I, I don't want to commit. I, I, there's, there's so many fish out there in the sea, man. I'm, I, I'm going to do that. And then money? I don't have enough money for me. <laughs> right? Remember men before you got married? How am I going to do this? There's no way I could have a wife. I've seen her collection of shoes already. <laughs> and so these are aren't these legitimate these are fairly legitimate arguments how can I do this and then um, I, I've seen other married people <laughs> why would I want their problems 
Right? Remember those days, men? You see some other men that are going through some battles, and you say, I'm better off single than to be going through that. I don't want to be stuck like that. Sorry, ladies, I'm just telling you, you're cluing you in a little bit. I'm too young, I've got too much to do. Remember that one? There's, there's a whole lot to do in this life. That was a big obstacle, and, and these are huge obstacles, right? What if I meet? <laughs> and that's always the scary one, and women, I'm just going to clue you in. We're always thinking, at least there at the beginning, we're thinking, I don't know if I should marry, because what, uh, what if I get to the wedding reception... And that, that caterer is gorgeous. You know, that would be tough, right? Yeah, a little too late there. You messed up. So there's always this, there's this fear that, man, I'm going to find somebody else. There's somebody else that's better. And so these, these are legitimate, legitimate concerns. They're big obstacles. They're real questions that we have, right? I wrote a couple notes here. Um, men that are married... How many of you, before you got married or with your significant other now, how many of you worked out that whole freedom thing before you got married? You got some books and went through them and said, I'm going to really figure this freedom out, and, and that's not what we did, is it? We didn't spend a lot of time trying to work through this obstacle. That's, that's, that's not what happened. It's an obstacle, but that's not what happened. We, we didn't spend a lot of time, we, we recognized that we were committed. We, we didn't spend a lot of time trying to figure that one out. We didn't say, we, didn't, we definitely didn't think this one through, men. We didn't think, well, I'm going to save up money, and I'm going to save, 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 and when I'm 55, I'm going to be able to marry that girl and be able to take care of all that shoes and all that other stuff. We, we, didn't, we didn't go through that, right? We never worked out, we never worked out that obstacle, did we? We never worked out the, how the, all those other things that we wanted to do. Men, we didn't, we didn't meet that woman and then go gouge her eyes out so that we wouldn't see another woman for the rest of our life. All I have is my, that one image of her. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't work. Listen to me. We, we didn't work all those things out, right? We didn't get all of those questions. I didn't get all of those questions answered. There's only one reason that we would do this. Go ahead and pull up the next one there. It changes everything. Uh, I, before this point, before I met Christine, that marriage was just a category out there, something that I was afraid of, something that I, I wasn't sure I could do. It was a, it was a, 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 a big scary thing out there and, and you all know what I'm talking about and and then and then things change right you know what changed I met somebody personally hear me Whew. real obstacles for sure but it wasn't about women anymore It was about her. It wasn't about trying to figure out this commitment. It was about this relationship now. I got married in spite of my freedom, my commitment, my money, other married people. Because <laughs> in my mind, I knew that when I met this woman, when I married this woman, that we, we had something special. It didn't matter what everybody else was going through. I, I, I got married in spite of all the other things that I wanted to do on my own because now I had someone I could join together with and do these things. I got married in spite of the thought of meeting anybody else because I realized if I met anybody else, they wouldn't match up to her. Now the reason I'm saying all that is these are all huge obstacles that we have. 
But there's something about falling in love that starts to shrink all those other things. Those things don't matter anymore. I can't tell you about suffering. I, I can't tell you about all these other things in the world. All I can do is tell you I'm falling in love with the maker of the universe. And everything that I thought was an obstacle is now shrinking. I don't have to have all the answers. I don't know how Jonah spent the night in, in the middle of, a, of a, the water inside of a fish. I don't know how the, what happened to the dinosaurs. I don't care. Because I'm in love. I want you to see this, and I'm almost done. John chapter 1, verse 43 kind of gives us this, this picture of, of Jesus here in, in kind of this real relationship. I want you to see this is, this is before the initial 12 were all together, but, and this is the fill in the blank in your bullet, and it says the next day Jesus decided to leave. Man, I, I don't know what these words must sound like, but they must be phenomenal words to hear from the Savior because people are just dropping what they're doing and they're going and following Him. They're leaving everything behind and they're following Him. So these must be these amazing words, words that I'm praying that every single one of you hear even this morning, just follow me. Because it was amazing, not only for, for Philip here, but watch what Philip does. Go to the next verse and it says, Philip... Like Andrew and Peter was from the town of Bethlehem. Follow me, I want to be a part of. That's the world-changing realignment of my mind, my heart, my soul, my lifestyle, my everything that I do. I want to follow Him that way. And it says, Philip found Nathaniel and told him, and then it gets a little funny, and he says, we found the one. found the one. And then he says, we found the one Moses wrote about in the law in whom the prophet also wrote, and then look what it says, Jesus of Nazareth. And that's, that's an important thing because he probably shouldn't have said Nazareth right there. He probably shouldn't have because that put more skepticism in everybody's mind. We don't know why, people don't know why, but all through Scripture and all through the historical parts of, of Nazareth, Nazareth is always spoken poorly of. Let's put it in perspective. In, no, I'm not going to pick on West Virginia. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I will pick on West Virginia. He mentions Nazareth, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now watch, watch what it says in verse 46 here. It says, Nazareth. I don't understand how the Savior could be coming from Nazareth. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. This is a big question. This is a big obstacle for him. In Nazareth, what do you mean? Can anything good come from Nazareth? I, I, I'm not buying it. I'm, I'm, I'm not buying it. But, but I love what Philip's response is here. Philip's response is a phenomenal response. Look what it says. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Nathaniel asks, and, and then Philip says this. Come and see. Just follow me and come and see. Watch this. Nathaniel's thinking, I've got questions. Then uh, I, I, I don't get it. Uh, I, don't, I don't have all the answers. In, and go on to the next verse here. When Jesus saw Nathanael approaching, he was using this pair of, uh, phrasing 
for our benefit. He's, what he's saying is, here comes a man that's not going to just make up a, 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 face, a false doctrine. Here comes a man that's not just going to lie to make everybody feel good about his lie. Here comes a man, here comes a man that has no deceit. Here comes a man that's going to ask me the questions bluntly. He's going to tell me straight as it is. Here comes the man that's got all of these issues and, and he wants to know. He doesn't want anything false. He wants something real. Here comes that man. So this what the scripture is saying here. And, and so the, and, and, and Nathaniel's a skeptic. Now I want you to see this in verse 48. Look what it says. Uh, apparently, Jesus says... Uh, Nathaniel's response is... How do you know me? I think that's a big question. Matter of fact, I put it on the next slide. Start thinking about how personal Jesus has already been to you. How passionately He's already sought you out. How He knows your name. How He knows what problem you're going through and what the answer is. How He knew to send that check when you needed it. How he knew he sent that person to just lift you up when you needed it. How he knew when to allow you to go through the trouble that would bring you back to him when you needed it. We should be sitting here with this amazement of how well do you know me? How do you know me? I don't know what happened, but Go on to the next one there, John chapter 1, verse 49. It says, and then Nathanael said, let's talk about that Nazareth. It's not what it said. Matter of fact, this is what it says. Go on to the real chapter in verse. It says, uh, go on to the next one there. I don't know if Nathaniel ever got the Nazareth thing figured out. I don't know if he ever understood all of it. I don't know if he ever, ever got that answered. But what I do know is there was something personal, and it was so personal that it caused the Nazareth thing to shrink and disappear. This man with no deceit inside of him, a man that wasn't going to fake a journey, goes from a skeptic to a follower of Christ in a matter of an instant. There was something personal. He met Jesus. I, I want you to see this, and I like I said, I'm almost done. I promise I'm speeding through. Go on to the next one. There's a big question. The most important thing to God is go on to the next one. It, it says, it, it's part of our, our verse, it says, understand the Lord. He, you see, I, I, I carry around a, a, a Michael Jordan a gold basketball card with me. Uh, on, on the back of the card, it has all of the stats on Michael Jordan. I'm a huge Michael Jordan fan, and I carry it around when I'm speaking to teenagers, and, and I start talking about how, how much I know about Michael Jordan. I know that Michael Jordan, uh, his favorite shoe was the 13. I know that Michael Jordan wears his, in his college basketball shorts underneath of his Bulls game shorts. I know all these stupid things. His favorite movie is Friday. I know all these stupid things about Michael Jordan, but, but if you ask Michael Jordan who Andy Combs is, he has no idea who Andy Combs is. And yet we treat God the same way, and I think that's kind of what we do here. We want all of our questions answered. Don't we want all of our questions answered? We want to know why there's suffering in the world. We want to know why my life is this way. We want to know what the plan is. I, I'm not going to follow you, God, because I don't understand the plan. We don't understand any of that. And so we've got all these legitimate, they're very legitimate obstacles. But there's one thing, there's one word that changes that. And go ahead and pull it up on the next one.
Father. Come to know who God is. But there's something about a personal relationship. When you start falling in love with Him, these things that you had these big obstacles with, they start to disappear and some of them you won't even care about because you've recognized who the Father is and you're falling in love with Him. And it'll shrink those obstacles. Pull up the next one for me. God wants you to know Like I can get up here and explain all the answers. I can't. You get around some people that are on fire for Jesus and you understand they don't know all the answers, man, but something has happened inside them. Something so deeply has touched their life that's changed them. They, they, they might not even be able to tell you anything about the Bible, but what they do know that the old things are passing away and all things are becoming new. That's what they know. And I know some of you are thinking, man, that's crazy. Pastor, you're, not, you're still not getting by with that on me. But isn't that how we would react? Don't you want people to know you before they start getting all the questions and things answered about you? Isn't that something that we're afraid of? Somebody's going to find out all the stuff about me and they're never really going to get to know me. Isn't that something? That's something innate that's been put in us by God. The same characteristic that God has. I want you to know me. I don't need you to know all about me. I don't need you to understand me. What I want you to do is to know who I am. Isn't that beautiful? I want to finish with this. There's two songs that popped into my mind. I'm not singing, so you don't get up and run out yet. The first one is, the, they're both hymns. And the first one is, He touched me. And the words go, He touched me. Oh, He touched me. And then it says, Something happened. And now I know He touched me. And He made me whole. Whew. Personal. Not all the obstacles, not all the legitimate obstacles, and I'm praying that we could start getting by this. What my desire, my dad gave me this aha moment, and I was guilty, and I'm standing here to confess to you guys. Sometimes, as a pastor, I try my best to please and preach and help other people, but my dad said this last week while I was preaching, the only purpose in my life is to be more like Christ. And if I can do that, I'll succeed in every other aspect of my life. And then the last, the last one was this old hymn that goes a little like this. It goes, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And those things of the earth, those big obstacles, they grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I'm asking you this morning, can you hear him? Can you hear those famous words? I don't want you to just believe in me. I don't want you to just try to understand me. I want you to fall in love with me. Follow me. If you'll follow me, I'll start to answer every question that you need answered. Let's move from non-believer to believer and from believer to Christian and let's get beyond that Christian point. And let's fall in love with the God that will radically, supernaturally realign every, listen to me, every aspect of my life, my morality, how I live my life, how I think, how I speak, how I treat other people, how I serve, how I work, how I give. And I know these are scary things. I know these are legitimate obstacles. But what I, I had a picture of my wife up there. Look, it was a scary thing for me to get married. It's a scary thing now that I'm going to be 40, have a newborn and a teenager here in a few months. But I can tell you this much. I'm in love with her. I don't have to understand that all. I believe we're going to get through it. I know God's going to take care of us. I know He's going to bless us. It's not, it's not any different with the Savior. You can trust Trust him. He's never, ever, ever, ever failed you. Ever failed you. 
and they won't start now. You can trust Him. You can trust Him. Get beyond all those obstacles. And when you hear the words even today, when He says, follow me, get up and follow Him. It's not the best way. It's the only way. It's the way that we're supposed to live life. He says, I've overcome the world. I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. If we'll do it His way, we can't fail. Are you willing to follow Him? I want to be. I want to fall in love with Him. I, I want to fall, listen, I want to fall in love with Him. Man, I want to continue to know who He is. I want to know what He thinks about life. I want to know what He says I am. I want to believe when we saw these words up here that I am a child of the one true King and I am an heir to the throne. There is so, there is so much that the Father thinks about me. He's a good Father. He loves me. I want to, I want to continue to, to get to know that God. I don't want to be bound in the laws of religion. I want to be bound in the laws of relationship. That's, that's where I want to be. I want to fall in love with God. My wife's pregnant, in case you didn't know. She's not just making fun of me by any stretch of the imagination. There, there are things that uh, go on. And I, I got to be careful I say this. There are things that go on that's um, uh, they're not stuff that I, I like. To do, but because I'm in love, I want to make things as easy on her as possible. It should be the same way. I, I want what's best for her. I want what's best for God. And so when you hear that, follow me, like, like Philip heard that, follow me, go grab somebody else, that kind of follow me. That's when you got it. Let's bow our heads and pray. I know I've gone too long. I apologize. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. The famous words are being echoed again here this morning. And this is to every single person in every single pew, whether you've been at church all of your life or this is your first time to walk in the door ever or the first time in years, these words are still very valuable and very applicable even this morning. Here are the words. Will you follow me? Will you get past your unbelief? Will you get past these obstacles and just learn to fall in love with me? Because if you learn to fall in love with me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to free you. You just have to trust me. With your heads bowed and, and your eyes closed this morning, maybe for the very first time, or again, maybe you've heard this millions of times, and maybe it's just now making sense. And you say, Pastor Andy, I want to be a Christian. But I don't want to just be a believer. I mean, I want to be someone that has fallen in love with you. I want, I, want to, I want to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That's my prayer this morning. And if that's you this morning, you just look up at me and say, yeah, that's me. I want to be a follower. I want to be a disciple. Amen. Amen. Don't let me miss you. Amen. I see you back there. Amen. Amen. This is what Scripture says to do, especially if you never have met Him, if you've never met the Savior. Scripture says, if we confess our sin, if we tell God that we're a mess, and we failed Him, it says that He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us, listen, and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. You get to have a brand new life today in Jesus Christ. If you are a follower of Christ, maybe you're one of the believers of Christ, and you said, Pastor, this morning, I want to surrender everything. 
I, I want to fall in love with him. There's still some big questions, but I don't need to have the questions answered. I just want to know who he is. I want him to know who I am. I want to have this relationship. If that's you this morning, would you just look up and say, I need to have a better relationship with the Father. Would you just look up with me? Yeah, amen. 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 Praise God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, there are decisions being made right now in this room. God, some that have never met you, they're meeting you for the first time, God, and I pray right now that you would reach down and touch them. I pray that they would hear the words, follow me, God. I pray that they would get up and follow you. I pray that they would learn to walk with you, follow you, and do the things that you did. And God, there are those that have heard that your story over and over and over again, God, that they're here this morning and, and there's still some skepticism. There's still some things that they haven't surrendered. They're still living a certain way and, and, and living another way here at church or they're doing things just in an awkward, awkward, lukewarm part of their life, Lord. And, and I pray this morning that you would allow them to see you in the greatness of your majesty and the fullness of your glory, God. And I pray that they would fall in love with you. I pray that they would jump all in. I pray that they would go all Go for it all. I pray that they surrender themselves to you. I pray that this morning you would start a relationship with them and not any more religion. And God, we thank you so much for your love for us. Bless this day. We thank you for our guests. We ask that you bless them on their travels home. Thank you for bringing them here to lead us into your throne room. Thank you for your word. We praise you and worship you in a great and mighty way. In your precious name we pray. Amen. There will be a basket. I don't know if we...